He is, He is the name above every name. He's the name above all names. You are, you are God. You are worthy. How great, how great. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for being the great God, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you. God, we thank you for just who you are, for what you do, for the way you do things. Now, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for we say this morning, you are the Hollywood God. You are the holy God. You are the righteous God. You're the God above all gods. You're the only true and living God. And we come today to praise you, to worship you, to honor you, Father God, and to bless your name. God, we thank you for another privilege. We thank you for this honor, Father God, to just come in your presence. We realize that we are unworthy. We realize that we've fallen short. We realize that we've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. God, we ask you to forgive us. Bless us. Do not hold it to our account. Father God, for we repent of it in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we approach your word. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will fall on good soil. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will set us free. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will make us whole. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in the mighty, strong, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen, and thank God. How great, how great is our God. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. We bless his name here today. We bless his name. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We serve the amazing God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We serve the one and only true and living God. His name is Jesus. He is the son of the only living God on planet Earth. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. Let me call your attention to Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1. One verse, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 1. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1. We serve the amazing, the awesome God. Hallelujah. We serve the amazing God. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1. When you found it, you will discover these words. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Stand therefore, stand fast therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again by the, a yoke of bondage. I want to talk about the reality of freedom. The reality of freedom. The reality of freedom. We look at the world in which we live, we oftentimes see things that look like freedom. We see things that pretend to be freedom. But the late Mega Ever says it like this. He says, freedom is not free. Freedom always comes with a cost. Freedom will always come because it will either cause one's life or cause one blood, cause one tears, or cause one oppression and pain. Freedom is not free. We must come to realize that 
that freedom is real. We must come to realize that freedom is not something we just talk about. Freedom is real, but it is not free. It comes with a great cost. Even in today's society, even in the 21st century, it is causing us great pain and sorrow. Although the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 was signed on that fateful January 1st by President uh, Abraham Lincoln, we must understand it was set to set slaves free. But many of us today are still not free. Freedom, freedom was set on a course. That fateful day, January 1st, 1863, by the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation by the, the president of that day, Abraham Lincoln. It made it possible for men, for women of all races, to walk away from slavery to never return again. But those of you who were born and reared in Texas, it wasn't until June 18th, June 19th, rather, 1865, that a Union general showed up in Galveston, Texas, to make the public announcement to the state of Texas that the Emancipation Proclamation was signed a year and a half ago. And all of you who are now slaves are to be set free. Here and now we have what is known as Juneteenth. It is that celebration that, that many, not only in Texas, but now all over this great nation, celebrate Juneteenth. Some people use it as an excuse to be off work, but they celebrate all over this nation, Juneteenth, even though in other states they were already free. They celebrate Juneteenth. They celebrate it because the slaves in Texas realized that freedom was real. The reality of freedom must sink in our heart. The reality of freedom must be real. The reality of freedom must be something that we can live with and live in the midst of. But I suggest to you today that freedom on a spiritual level does exist. I want to let you know, I want to let you know today, I want to let you know today that, that freedom, even on a spiritual level, does exist. Nobody really wants to be suppressed. No one wants to be oppressed. No one wants to be controlled as an animal. No one wants to be set in the midst of things that are unlike freedom around them. So we look for the reality of freedom. Freedom. We pray for the reality of freedom. We look forward to the reality of freedom. Even in the 21st century, we find ourselves looking for freedom. Yes. Young children look for freedom to get out the house. They, they, use, they use conversation like this. I'll be so glad when I get grown. <laughs> and they don't realize that while they are enjoying the cornbread, the greens, while they're enjoying the baking and the ham, while they're enjoying the chicken and the turkey, they need to get used to somebody else buying it. All right. Because once they get out there on their own, once they get their freedom, once they get to a point where they are grown, they realize that there's a cruel world out there. There's a world that don't like us. There's a world that doesn't like other people. And there's a world that's not friendly to mankind. Yes. We need to get to a point where we realize that freedom can only come through Jesus Christ. Amen. There is somebody even this morning who have found themselves in a bad relationship. And they are being abused. And they're looking forward to one day being free. Mm -hmm. There are others of us who 
realized that freedom was set place for the African American to vote on August the 6th, 1965, by the signing of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. But there is still voter suppression all over this nation. This Voting Rights Act was signed so that there will be no discrimination, that there will be no one turned away, there will be no one uh, convinced that they have not the right to vote. But we haven't come to the point yet, and people have not accepted it yet, that we have the right, the God-given right, to voice our opinion even at the ballot box. Yes. The reality of freedom has to set in. The reality of freedom must take place. The reality of freedom must be something that mankind can grasp. At the end of the day, we must realize that without Jesus, we're still not free. Amen. Amen. Paul outlines this right here in Galatians chapter 5. The apostle Paul talks to those who were Jews, those who were stuck in tradition, those who had been doing things their own way and had been doing things the way that God had set them up to do it, but they had not accepted the reality of freedom through Jesus Christ. Jesus ushers in grace and they don't have to live by the law anymore, but those who were stuck in tradition, they kept right on living by the law. They kept right on doing what the law would have them to do because they didn't have in their minds nor in their hearts the reality of freedom. Yes, freedom must, must become a reality in our hearts. Freedom must become real to us. Freedom must become something that we can live for and live with. Freedom must be something we must look to and look to be a part of because if we don't have the realization that freedom is real, we will always live in slavery. We have to get to a point in our lives where we understand that freedom is something that we have to make sure that we look forward to. Amen. And as we look forward to this freedom, we know that it is God who makes us free. That's right, that's right. You know that if we're going to be Christians or Christians who live in the freeness of godliness, we must understand that if freedom is going to be real to us, freedom must come through Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. We have to come to the conclusion that there's a reality of freedom. Freedom. We must come to the conclusion that freedom is, is real. We must come to the conclusion that, that freedom is something that can be grasped. That's right. Maybe somebody now is stuck in a bad situation and you don't know how you're going to get out. I present to you Jesus. Someone may have a messed up mind who think very little of themselves. I submit to you, Jesus. Somebody somewhere, somebody somewhere may be in a condition right now where they find themselves on the verge of suicide. I'm saying to you this morning, hold on. Hang in there. Don't give out and don't give in. Jesus can fix it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how bad things have gotten. Your life is worth living. That's right. Your life is worth keeping. Right. We don't deserve to take life because we weren't able to give life. Only God is able to take life Amen. and do it in a justifiable way. God gives. And it's God's. And God alone who has the ability, who has the authority to take life. Let me just say to some man or some woman out here who, who, who's walking away from a bad relationship, hanging there and trust Jesus. Yes. Let me say to those who are, 
or imprisoning somebody else who won't let that person out of their sight. And, and you come to the conclusion, if you can't have them, no one will have them. Let me just say to you, try God's way and let God deliver both you and them. Amen. Apostle Paul talked to this Jewish congregation. He tells them to turn away from their traditions. He tells them to leave the old way of the law alone. Because there are some realities in the law. You see, the law is based on works. The law, the law is based on how many deeds we can do, how often we can do those deeds, and how often we make things happen. The law is based on our works. But as Paul ushers in this thought of grace in Galatians chapter 5, we are reminded as the law operates based on grace, based on works, I'm sorry, grace is based on faith. Yeah, the law is based on works, it's based on deeds, it's based on what we can do, what we can make happen. But God bases salvation. He bases freedom. He, he bases the pursuit of happiness on faith. You see, it's not enough for us to be able to, to carry ourselves a particular way. It's not enough for us to be able to make things happen the way we want things to happen. We have to depend on God through faith to make all things happen. So the law is based on works. The law is based on deeds. Grace is based on faith. The second thing to do today is the law cannot justify man. But grace justifies sinful man. You see, it's grace that justifies us. It's, it's grace that, that keeps us. It's grace in the midst of our sin. God gives us grace that we can live a freedom made life, yes. that we can live in the reality of freedom. It's all because of God's love for us, God's grace. This word grace means favor. Amen. This word grace means that God gave us favor that we didn't deserve. God has blessed us through his amazing grace. The third thing to you today is the law makes Christ nothing. The law doesn't even refer to Christ. The law does not refer to that great mediator, Jesus Christ, who, who sets the godly example before us. But grace begins with Christ. And grace ends with Christ. Amen. I want to tell you today, if you're going to have God's grace, you got to make sure that you have Christ Jesus. Yes. Grace Begins with Christ. Mm -hmm. Grace ends with Christ. Whereas the law does not even consider Christ. My first, my fourth thing to you today is the law is a way of flesh. Whereas grace is the way of the Holy Spirit. The law, the law is a way of flesh. We're depending on on our mortal bodies. We are dependent upon this flesh that we are in. But grace brings us to a point of dependency on the almighty God by way of his Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what we mean when we sing that song. He walks with me. Right. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. It's because of God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he, he walks with me. Amen. The Holy Spirit, he, he talks with me. The Holy Spirit, he guides me into all righteousness. Yes. We need God's grace. You see, when Jesus comes into our lives, also comes in God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. 
When we receive Jesus Christ, God the Son, as our personal Lord and Savior, let me just say to you this morning, you have to also know that the Holy Spirit comes into your life. You don't have to get in another prayer line. You don't have to be filled again with by way of your Holy Spirit. One feeling is enough. You just have to allow the Holy Spirit to be activated in you, to lead you, guide you, direct you, and protect you. I feel point to you today. I'm just drawing a parallel between the law and grace. The law is a curse. Grace is a blessing. Yeah, 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 the law, the law is a curse. The law is a curse. The law is a curse. The reason why the law is a curse is because we cannot keep the law. Regardless of how good we are, regardless of how hard we try, we cannot keep the law. The law is a schoolmaster. The law is a principle that every time we step out of line, it reminds us, the law reminds us we messed up again. Grace is a blessing. Grace, grace is a blessing. Grace is a blessing because grace gives us another chance. I tell you, grace gives us another chance. Grace gives us another chance. Despite of who we are, despite of what we've done, grace gives us one more chance. Thank God for grace. Not only did he give me a second chance, he gave me another chance and another chance and another chance. And when you're free in Jesus Christ, God keeps giving you another chance. That's why the last time you prayed that prayer, I said, Lord, Lord, forgive me this time. I won't do it anymore. He forgave you then. And if you're at that crossroad again, he will, he will, he will forgive you again. If you just confess your sins and stay with his amazing grace. A sixth point in this particular comparison of the law and grace is that grace keeps us enslaved. Uh, the law, rather. The law keeps us enslaved. The law keeps us enslaved where grace grants us freedom. The law, the law. The law will always enslave us. The law will always tell us if we drive into church and it's on the Sabbath, we can't get out and fix our broken tire. But grace gives us freedom to walk with the Lord on the Sabbath, to walk with the Lord every day of the week. We have to be willing to walk with the Lord regardless of the day of the week, regardless of the time of the day. We have to walk with the Lord because grace gives us freedom to bless the Lord at all times. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises will continue to be in my mouth. I will continue to bless the Lord. I want to submit to you today. Come on, bless the Lord with me. We have the freedom. We have the opportunity to bless the Lord. My final comparison here is number seven. The law results in bondage. Well, grace grants us liberty. The law is right there in the text. Paul says the law grants us bondage. Whereas Grace grants us liberty. Paul says stand fast in it. This word stand fast means to stand firm. It means to persist. It means to persevere. It means to keep right on standing. It means to become stationary. Regardless of what the wind blows. Regardless of where the wind blows, regardless of how the wind blows, you remain stationary. Amen. And don't you move, don't you move. Don't. It says to stand firm. It, it says to persist. It says, it, Paul says stand fast. He said persevere, keep on standing regardless of what new religion comes on the scene. The bad thing is people are always being confronted by new religions. 
by new things, by new examples. I mean, the latest thing now are crystals. We don't need crystals when we got Jesus. We don't need transcendental meditation because we ought to meditate on God's word and talk back and forth to Jesus through God's word. We need to tell Jesus all about Jesus' word, tell Jesus what he says in his word. Many have gotten caught up and gotten lost along the way because of new stuff, new age, new religion. But Paul says to the Jews that have been born again, to the Jews who know Jesus Christ, stand fast, stand firm, and keep right on standing and be stationary. He says stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. Stand fast, therefore, stand fast because there is liberty in Christ Jesus. And this liberty from Christ Jesus has made you free. He's made you free. He's made you free. This liberty in Christ Jesus has set us free. It has made us free. This liberty in Christ Jesus has set the record straight. We are now free and we are free indeed. John Gospel says, he that the Lord sets free, he whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. This word liberty means freedom. This word liberty means you are set free to live in a godly way. This word liberty means that you cannot live any kind of way and omit the godly way. Now, when we have freedom, we must understand that our freedom begins where others' freedom end. We cannot jump over into others' freedom. You can't trespass in other folks' house and territory without being guilty. What I'm saying to you is you must live according to God's standard of freedom. You must omit any relationship. You must omit any relationship which has not the relationship that leads to salvation. You must omit. You must get rid of. He tells these, these young Christian believers, these, these new converts, that you need to make sure that you walk in the liberty, stand in the liberty, exist in the liberty that was given to you through Christ Jesus word Christ is the anointed one. This word Christ is the one who has paid it for us. This word Christ is the Messiah. This word Christ is the son of God. Yes. Jesus is the son of God. Amen. We ought to make sure that we walk in the liberty. Walk in the freedom. Walk according to the standards by which Christ the deliverator Christ, the Messiah, the one who have, have brought us. Christ, the, the one who has freed us. We must stand firm. We must stand fast. We must persist in this freedom, this liberty that Christ has made us free. This phrase made us free means that he has liberated us. This phrase, made us free, means he has delivered us. And finally, this phrase, made us free, means that we are now exempt <laughs> from all these ceremony, ceremonial liabilities. Right. You see, your ceremony can't get you freedom. Your ceremonies can't get you walking closer to God. Your, your ceremonies cannot keep you free. But Jesus is the only thing that keeps us free. Jesus is the only person who keeps us free. His name is Jesus. He is the righteous son of God. His name is Jesus. He is the great deliverator. He is the one who liberates us. He has come to make us free. If you're struggling in your life today, I recommend Jesus. 
If you're having a hard time today, I recommend Jesus. If things are going well in your life today, I recommend Jesus. The great I am, I recommend him because he makes all things possible. He makes all things well. I recommend Jesus. Paul says, stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He says, don't be entangled. Don't, don't be entangled again. So when he says, don't be entangled again, he says to us that we've been entangled before. He says to us that we've been entangled before, and because we've been entangled before, don't go back to what you used to do. The, the apostle Peter says it like this. Peter says it like this in, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. Peter says it like this. You would have been better had you not known the way of righteousness than to know the way of righteousness and turn back to your old way. He says, you would have been better had you not known any better than to turn back to your old ways. And he says that you are nothing more than a dog and a hog. He compares us to hogs. He compares us to the sow. He compares us to the sow who has run back and wallowed in the same mud he'd just been clean from. Peter says, we're nothing but hogs that have run back to our old ways and we've gotten in our old ways and we're repeating those old ways over and over and over again. Jesus has freed us. Jesus has set us free. Jesus has turned, turned us into other beings, holy beings. But if we go back to the old way, we're nothing like but a hog. We've gone back to the old way and we're wallowing in it. And then he says, We're nothing more than dogs. A dog that has eaten his food. And after the dog has eaten the food, he goes back and he vomits it up and he licks it up again. Apostle Peter says that when you get entangled with this old way, when you get caught up in this old way, you are nothing more than a dog who have gone back to lick up on that same nasty vomit that you just gotten free from. Word entangled mean ensnared, engaged. It means to, to, to get caught up in and to be oppressed by. He says, don't get entangled. Don't get ensnared. Don't get oppressed. Don't get caught up and don't get oppressed by and engaged in your old ways. He, say, he, says, he says that there's a righteous way. Jesus has brought in a different way. Jesus is coming to us in grace. He's coming to us by way of grace. He's coming to us in love. He's not coming to us in the law, so don't get entangled in the law. He says, don't get entangled again with a yoke of bondage. I'm reminded of in the backwoods of Mississippi what they would do. They would yoke two animals together, specifically two cows. A young cow and a seasoned cow, an old cow. We yoked the two of them together. This yoke was a coupling. This yoke was a pair of balances that went around each one of them's neck. And as the old cow turned, the young cow had to turn. Wherever the old cow went, the young cow had to go. It was known as a yoke. It was a coupling. It was a pair of balances. It was an apparatus to control domesticated animals. So this yoke, and wherever the little calf went, the cow had to go also. Paul says to these new Christians, 
Don't get caught up in these old yokes again. He said, don't be coupled with this lifestyle. Don't be coupled with, with this uh, law again. Don't be coupled thinking about you got to do the things you used to do the way you used to do it. And as we walk through Galatians chapter 5, we will find out first thing he mentions is circumcision. He's saying that you don't have to be circumcised, physically circumcised, physically have skin cut away in order to be saved, in order to have salvation. But what you need to do is be circumcised in your heart. And as we are circumcised in our heart, we understand that we must have servitude. We must serve the Lord, but we don't serve the Lord in order to be saved. We serve the Lord because we are saved. We serve some people. Some people today, some people couldn't make it. Some people could not make it. Some people could not be free if they had to serve in order to be free. How do you know that preacher? Because they are not serving since they are free. You see, we serve because we are free. We don't serve in order to be free. Paul says this yoke is a servitude. It's a servitude. And this servitude is because we are free, not because it's going to make us free. There's only one person that can make us free. That person is Jesus. The final word he says in verse number one is bondage. Bondage is. It's locked down. Bondage is, is, is secured with the key in somebody else's hand. Some of you think during, during the pandemic, the shutdown, the social distancing has bondage us. It's a lot more serious here in the text. This word bondage means slavery. You see, we may be locked down because of the pandemic for a few months. And if it causes us a few months just to live for a long time, I'm all right with a few months. That's right. Right. We ought to understand it's not bondage because bondage is slavery. Yes. Bondage is being locked down sometime for a lifetime. Bondage is slavery. Bondage sometimes is being locked down from one generation to the other. Slavery, 420 years. Slavery, 410 years. Slavery for the Israelites and slavery for the African American has been a bitter thing to swallow. Slavery, slavery has, has bondage, has bound us in our minds. Bondage means that we don't think much of ourselves and we think the lighter color means that we are better. I grew up watching people that, that go, go across the bayou to buy ice because they thought the ice was colder on the other side of the bayou. You see, every neighborhood has a separation point. You have, you have Texas Southern University on one side you have University of Houston on the other side. You have Scott running down, Scott Street running down the middle of the two. And when you go north on Scott and take a left, you see one thing. You go right off Scott going north, you take a right, you see something totally different. Every city has a street or a bayou or they have a railroad track. And for years and years, because we have been caught up in bondage in our minds. We thought if we go across the railroad track, the ice was better. We thought that the ice was cooler on the other side of the bayou. We thought that the ice was better on the other side of the street. It's because slavery damaged our minds. Bondage, bondage is when we think the shade of our skin makes us different. Because she's lighter than I am or he's 
lighter than I am. They're going to have privileges. And this nation has given many privileges by that. And people have said that this nation is not ready for anybody that's fully African American. Let me just say to you, you are just as good or better as anyone else is. Get out of that bondage. Amen. Clean up yourself. Cover up your tattoos. Dress up and hold your head up. Walk in with the interview. After you've done your due diligence, walk into the interview like you came to get the job and take God with you and God will relieve you. Amen. God will bless you. He will relieve you of your bondage. Some people have been in bondage, some relationships. And you've come to the conclusion that your relationships have battered you in such a way that you don't deserve another man or another woman. Some women have turned to other women in relationship. Some men have turned to other men in relationship just because somebody has damaged them. Let me tell you, try Jesus and do it Jesus' way, do it God's way. And you will be set free from bondage. Some neighborhoods are caught up in bondage. Neighborhoods, whole neighborhoods have been marginalized. Whole neighborhoods have been set aside. Whole neighborhoods have been classified as at risk. I, I was at a restaurant. I was at a restaurant one time. I was in a restaurant. And, and there was a there was a a, 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 a white man and and the, it was a, it was in a black neighborhood. Matter of fact, it was in Third Ward. And I was sitting there, and uh, all of a sudden, there was a guy. This is this is in the era of, of face covering. A guy coming in, a black guy coming in. He had his face covered, as all of us had our face covered. And and I was looking at the view. And all of a sudden, as the white guy ha headed out the door, he saw the black guy coming in. He stopped in his tracks. He wouldn't move another step. He stood there. He wouldn't move. He, he wanted to make sure that he didn't go outside because in his mind, he was in bondage. In his mind, he said, this is a black man with a face covering. And in this day and era, all of us ought to have face covering. And he stood there and he hesitated. He didn't move backwards. He didn't move forward. He stood right there until the man came in. The young man came in and went to the counter to order his food. And then he exited the building. It's a mindset. It's a heart set. I want to say to our members who are African Americans, our members who are Hispanic, and members who are Asians, let me say to you, you are just as important as anybody else. Yes. And you have just as much to offer as anybody else. Yes. I say to you, I recommend Jesus. He is the one that makes a difference. Yes. Yes. I recommend Jesus. He's the one that sets things straight. I recommend Jesus. He's the one who makes us whole. He brings about the reality of freedom. Amen. He did it over 2,000 years ago. Jesus the Christ set us free over 2,000 years ago. He took a tree, I tell you. He marched up Cameron's Hill. Jesus the Christ died for us over 2,000 years ago. Amen. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. Mean men killed him. They took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. Out of that third day morning, he rose from the dead. With all power, he rose from the dead. Jesus, the Christ, the Lamb of God, he rose for you and he rose for me. There may be somebody listening to me today who never confessed Jesus as your personal Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus. If you can believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And he rose from the dead. 
the Bible says in John 3.16, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, the Bible says if you believe the story that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried in a barber tomb, but early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. You can be set free today. You can be set free from slavery. You can be set free from harassment. You can be set free from oppression. And most of all, you can be set free from going to hell when you die. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You want to know Jesus? This is a good opportunity to get to know him. If you would, just bow your head and repeat after me and invite him into your life. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be poor. You don't have to be weak or strong. Matter of fact, Jesus is strong for you. Please just repeat after me and invite him into your life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. And make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, we believe that you're born again. And we believe that you're on your way to heaven when you die. And we believe that you've been set free today. This reality of freedom has to be a part of your life through Jesus Christ our Lord there may be others of you who struggle with sin like I do every time you would to do good evil is present with you I recommend that you stay with Jesus and if you're here and you need a church home I recommend the New Beginning Church. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the leader of this church. If you need a church home or you need prayer or you receive Jesus during this service today, please inbox me and let me know. And we'll be glad to celebrate with you, fellowship with you. We'd be glad to be a part of your life and allow you to be a part of our lives here at the New Beginning Church. Let me thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of our service. It is now offering time, and it's time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com or you can mail your offering in to P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77 459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. We're presently still using Cash App and we're slowly moving away from Cash App, but you can even Cash App it to dollar sign NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Can send your tithes and your offerings to cash tag NBC Souls. 
Again, thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for coming by and visiting with us. To our visitors, thank you so much for being a part of this service. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Please continue to lift those that we've called out in prayer. Please can lift, continue to lift the Dorothy Lee and her family. Uh, her family who mother has passed away. Dorothy Lee's mother has passed away. And we want to lift her and her family uh, before the Lord. We want to want to lift them before the Lord as, as these members of our church go through such a time as this. Please continue doing your Bible listening. Your Bible listening. We're in the book of Numbers now. We're in the book of Numbers. Please catch up with your Bible listening. We are excited about listening to the Bible. And as we listen, we got a little book like this. Most of us got a little book kind of like this. It's just uh, blank sheets of paper. And uh, we're just uh, writing writing what the Lord is saying to, uh, to, to us through our daily Bible listening. And we can fill up our books and go back and refer to it at a later date. So continue to do your Bible listening, listening to the Word of God daily. The schedule is out there. I put it out there Wednesday night. So if you need it, inbox me and I'll send it directly to you. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, Father God, that you have blessed us with a righteous mindset. We thank you, Lord, that you blessed us to be a part of you and you a part of us. We thank you, Lord, that you blessed our lives and continue to walk with us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we leave this place, leave this broadcast. Keep every person, keep every member, and bless us, Father God, that we will walk with you. And, Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Remind us that freedom is a reality. And remind us that the law is gone. We are living under grace. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion, until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Thank the Lord for another privilege, another chance to hear from him. We thank God for another privilege and another chance to hear from him. He has